from Munich. We have another delegate who's joined us today. He's flown all the way in from Munich from the NPD. He's a, uh, a councillor and his name is Karl Richter. He's come to address us and wish us our best regards. So Karl, if you want to come up, round of applause, please. Hello, comrades in Blackpool in Great Britain, dear Mr. Chairman, dear members of the British National Party, ladies and gentlemen. Just on Thursday, I returned together with our German member of the European Parliament, Mr. Udo Vogt, from Strasbourg. Unfortunately, because of some other tasks during this week, and Mr. Vogt is not able uh, to come personally here to Blackpool uh, to your conference, so he asked me to bring you his warmest greetings and wishes from Germany and from the German National Democratic Party, the NPD. For me personally, it is a great honor and pleasure to speak to you here for the first time as a representative of my party and to bring along greetings from Germany as I have been vice president of my party for several years and as it is an open secret that there were always quite close and regular connections between us and the British National Party. Well, to speak frankly, I think in the face of the challenges posed by mass immigration, globalization, and the so-called European integration, nationalist parties all over Europe have no alternative but to enforce and to strengthen their cooperation in order to strengthen our Europe, which is the place of our homelands and our peoples in the world. As European nationalists, as British, German, French, Greek, Italian and all other nationalists, we know and we are deeply convinced that now in our days it's the moment to fight for our future. And if we continue hesitating, perhaps we are about to lose our future and our countries. Only cowards or criminals can doubt that. In this point, I think I don't tell you anything new here in Britain. Nearly all over Europe, uh, the problems are the same and th those who are responsible for the problems are the same too in all our countries. There can be no doubt about the fact that we have to deal with people, with politicians, with mass media, which evidently all are pursuing the same goal. The end of Europe, the downfall of the white man, the death of everything. <laughs> death of everything which made Europe great in the last 2,000 years of history. Well, every day we are told by our politicians and by the mass media in our countries that there are human rights, in Germany they call them the Western values, which allegedly oblige us to do even more for the rest of the world and for millions of immigrants who already have taken a comfortable place in our countries. But in this topic, we should not get distressed. On the contrary, we should, we should stick to our guns and insist in one simple truth. There does exist only one duty. The duty to preserve our countries for our children, yes. our own children, and for our future. No other duty is existing, no duty to immigrants, no duty to an increasing number of Muslims in our countries, no duty to billions of black and brown and yellow people in the rest of the world. Today we are standing with our backs to the wall in our own countries. Today we as patriots, as members of a nationalist party anywhere in Europe, we can be compared to the white blood cells, the lymphocytes in the blood of our bodies, whose sole job it is to fight for the wealth and the surviving of the organism. No other objective can exist for a nationalist party in the year of 2014. Still today, in our times, you as British can profit 
from the benefits of your island. Of course, today there is the Euro Tunnel connecting England to the rest of Europe, of course. Today there are airplanes and other means of transport which didn't exist in the year of 1066 or 1588. But still Great Britain has remained an island in the ocean. If it is necessary, you have the possibility to do the right thing and to pull up the drawbridge and to blow up the Euro Tunnel. <laughs> For us in Germany, as well as for the French or the Greek, unfortunately, this possibility doesn't exist. The more important it is to strengthen the cooperation between all European nationalists in order to create something like a common defense of our countries, something that was called the Fortress Europe in former times. There can be no doubt about the fact that Britain is part of this common defense, that Britain must be part of this common European defense. Ladies and gentlemen, it is no surprise that times will not become easier for you in Great Britain as well as for us in Germany. As some of you perhaps know, the NPD is facing a procedure to ban our party, but you don't have to be a prophet to predict that there will not emerge anything at the end. The NPD doesn't do anything illegal, so it is quite impossible to ban our party, provided that the laws and the principles of a democratic state are still respected in Germany. But in one way or another, no one will prevent us from doing our job and from fighting for our country. Hereby, sometimes we only have to remember former times and the struggle of former generations of Germans and their struggle for our country in order to see that compared to the situation, let's say, during the war times, it requires, it re requires nearly no courage to stand up for our future today. What we are doing in Germany, as well as you here in Great Britain and in any other European countries, is not bad, is not forbidden, but is only to fight for the survival of our own countries. Ladies and gentlemen, especially, let me wish you good luck, especially for your new chairman, Mr. Walker. Let me wish you a good conference here in Blackpool. Let me wish you a good future. God bless our nations. God bless Great Britain. Thank you very much. And that really is great. I mean, for someone to come across from Germany just to address us like that. That really means a lot, doesn't it? That yeah. really means a lot. And thanks, Rob, for sorting that out. I mean, that's a tremendous boost for us. And this is what we want more of, more cooperation between parties in Europe who are struggling the same. They call us fascists, right? In Greece, they get elected in Greece, and what do they do? They, get, they throw them in prison, and they arrest them with machine gun toting policemen. And they call us the fascists. They get elected in Germany, right? And then they try and ban them. And then they call us the fascists as well. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Absolutely unbelievable, the deceit. But a round of applause again for Carl. It's tremendous. Thank you all so much.